Hi, everybody. Can you hear me well? Good. So, um, first, I'd like to thank uh, the uh, Tel Aviv University for inviting me here. I'm very happy to be here for Cyber Week. Uh, before being a venture capitalist, uh, I was an entrepreneur. I built three companies in, in the US and in Asia in machine learning. If you use a smartphone today, for example, if you use Siri, chances are you are, you are using my technologies. In any case, I um, have 10 minutes, which is very little. Uh, so I'm going to try to talk about a couple of things that seem to be very important. I, um, I'm going to start by saying everybody had a AI is great slide. I have a different slide. I have an AI is hype slide. So uh, everybody, big corporates, startups, everybody now says, oh, we have AI. The reality is very few people actually do have AI. I'm going to talk to um, why is this in a second, but if you look at this graph on the left-hand side, this is the uh, number of times the word artificial intelligence was mentioned in earnings calls uh, on the S&P 500, and you see it's skyrocketing for the past two or three years. Believe me, very few of these guys, S&P 500, actually do meaningful AI today. Um, because I don't have much time, I'm going to skip to what it is. So when we talk about AI, we talk about intelligence. Now this is not a, I know it's a university, so we can talk philosophy, but as an entrepreneur and now an investor, I'm not interested in philosophy. I'm interested in creating value. So what is intelligence? Um, let's talk about a business context. So in my business, just like in your business, in your daily activity, you don't collect data because you like to collect data. You don't get informed because you just like to get informed. You don't build forecasts, business plans. You don't predict the future because you like to do it. The only reason why you collect data, get informed, and the only reason why you build predictive models, forecasts, and business plans is because you want to make one thing and one thing alone, and that's to make decisions. And um, if you're quote-unquote smart or intelligent, um, you make the decision, you gauge the outcome of this decision based on the, the goals that you're trying to achieve, and you learn from that. Good decision, bad decision, and you improve. So the next time around, faced with the same or similar circumstances, you make a better decision. That's human intelligence. Well, machine intelligence is no different. So AI is not data. People talk about data, yes. AI is not data. Um, AI is not predictive analytics. AI is about injecting machines that can make decisions and self-learn from the outcomes of these decisions to reparameterize, reconfigure themselves to make a better decision the next time around. That's what AI truly is. Now, I'm going to show you a slide now. And you're going to ask me, why am I showing a Korean War slide at an AI conference? This is a dogfight um, in 1952 or 53. You got a Sabre, a US Sabre, against a Chinese MiG-15. Um, what happened is, after the Korean War, the US Air Force commissioned a colonel by the name of John Boyd. And if some of you are pilots, and if some of you have been studying uh, the art of uh, being a fighter pilot in the US, then you know about the OODA loop. The OODA loop was a framework developed by this colonel, John Boyd, to analyze how pilots made decisions in the Korean War and is it won or lost. Now, this OODA loop has four different steps. Observe, orient, decide, and act. Observe is perception, so using your eyes, your ears, to perceive the world. Just sense it. Not understand it, just sense it. Orient, the second phase, is now that you've perceived the world, take that perception in context of what you know, your training, your knowledge, your model of the world. And once you've understood 
your circumstances in context of what you know. Um, then you have to outline strategies, that's decision, that's the decision step. You outline strategies, you decide which one you believe is the best, and you act. And because you act, the world has changed, and the world has changed, you observe again, and you go through that loop over and over again. And what Colonel Boyd found, which is fascinating, is that the most successful pilots were not the ones who were best at any of these different steps. For example, they were not the best, they were not the ones with the best set of eyes. Or they were not the ones with the best marks in training coming into combat. The, very, the most successful pilots were the ones who were going through that loop as often and as quickly as possible. So what John Boyd, the colonel, found and proved was that surviving, learning, and adapting is key to winning. Now, that would seem, in, um, in hindsight, uh, very interesting, but what to me is interesting is that you can apply this very same framework to machine intelligence. You can take algorithmic science and apply each algorithm to solving a particular step in the loop. By the way, this is not exhaustive. You can use deep learning for a lot more than just perception, but, but traditionally deep learning has been very successfully used, as you know, in anything that is perception-based. Computer hearing, uh, computer vision, for example, and the list goes on. Um, now, the point of this slide is not to discuss algorithmic science. We could discuss about it. For example, evolutionary computation is a branch of genetic uh, algorithms, is a superset of genetic algorithms which uh, Maddie was talking about before. The point that I'm making with this slide is that you can embed each of these steps in software, and by embedding each of these steps in software, you can begin to create a self-learning decision-making engine. And that's how you get to machine intelligence. And you can leverage the speed of the loop. Because what computers do well is they compute quickly. What, what they don't do very well is dimensionality yet. So today, that loop can function very well uh, in, certain, in narrow domains. So for example, um, top left, high frequency trading. If you trade at 10 microseconds, your understanding of the world can be extremely limited, right? You just need to know the book and the depth of the book and that's it. You don't need to know anything else about the world. If you trade at the macro, which is on the right side, on much longer time horizons, you need to understand much more of the world, right? Um, if there's an election problem in Israel, that's gonna impact your positions in the long term. Um, but if not, it's not the case if you do um, a high frequency trading. So the challenge today for machine learning is to move from the left-hand side and progressively through algorithmic science and better com computation over time grow to higher dimensionality problems and more complex, more value-driving problems. So this sounds good in principle. Um, but there's a lot, a lot of hurdles. So uh, very, very often I'm, I'm being asked by companies to talk to how they could deploy AI in their businesses. And then we talk about it, and there's a whole litany of problems that come up. So I'm not going to go through the, you know, this is just a few, by the way. I'm not going to go through the whole list. But one that I really uh, like is the black box, right? We, there was, um, the speaker before we talked about the black box nature of some algorithmic approaches. For example, again, CNN, so deep learners, intrinsically are black boxes. It's not the case for other approaches sometimes. Some approaches are declarative, but deep learners are black boxy in nature. Now, there's something else that, black, that, that is a black box in this world. That's my brain, your brain. So machines are, you know, let's, we say machines are black boxes, but our brains are black boxes too. I can rationalize all I want about how I made that decision, but nobody is actually seeing the, the exact um, pathway in my brain that led to me making the decision. 
Nobody. So we've lived with our own black boxes for a very long time. For centuries, for millennia. And the, the reason why we've lived with it is because we're able to ring fence it. We have performance reviews, we have codes of conduct, we've got laws. That is ring fencing our own black box. Well, you can do the same with machines. So you can ring fence the black box. So it's not magic, right? It's not threatening. Just put the tools in place to ring fence the black box. One of the, uh, one of the other ones that I like is what questions should we ask? Um, very often, projects fail because it's not the right question to ask. Um, I, I remember uh, working on a training uh, project where for four to five years, uh, we really worked really hard to develop an artificial trader. And we were very successful. Um, we asked, can you trade? Can you make a good trade of the system? And it took us five years to put it together. Um, Self-evolving trading strategies. Um, what happened is the trader was trading fantastically well, doing 25 beeps per trade return, which is amazing. It's an amazing return. But it was trading two, three times a day. Right? The question we should have asked to the trader is, don't give me the best trades, right? but make me money. Because if you do two, two or three trades a day, you don't deploy much capital. If you do 50, 100, 1,000 trades a day, you have to deploy a lot of capital, and then you can actually make capital sweat. You can build a hedge fund around it. Right? So that's a typical thing. To, to be able to um, ask the right questions, you need to do one thing. And this was very well said just before. You need to marry dumb expertise and technology, deep science. You cannot do things in isolation. Uh, that marriage is key. Every project in AI works if you marry these two things. Am I out of time? Yes. So I will just talk to one thing then, and that's this. Um, I said before at the beginning of this talk that um, you remember this, this graph where people were talking to, uh, to artificial intelligence in earnings calls? So the folks at uh, medium.com did a study three months ago, and they looked at the questions that analysts asked uh, in earnings calls of five very large airline companies over the past three years. They looked at thousands and thousands of questions and answers over the last three years. Digital transformation, machine learning, artificial intelligence was none of the top 20 topics. So they used AI, they used uh, AI, misnomer, they used a classification algorithm to cluster the data, and they came up with 20 top topics, none of which mentioned digital transformation, none of which mentioned machine learning and artificial intelligence. What does it tell you? It tells us that the best brains, the analysts on Wall Street, the best brains today still do not realize that machine learning is going to change everything, including an airline's business. So this surviving, adapting, learning thing, this is not happening yet. Um, I believe myself that the only way, so if, this, if you see this, if you, if you know that Wall Street is not thinking about it, if you are in it, that's your opportunity. And that's why I'm, I come to Israel very often and invest in companies here because this is the country of survivors, of learners, and adapters. That's why I believe when I see this and I see here, I know who's going to win. Thank you very much.